Hi, and welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Uh, we are live, and uh, we have a special guest this week. So uh, we've got uh, we got Michael over here. Hello, everybody. And uh, and of course, Anna and Christian as well. So we're here. We're not going anywhere. So the reason that uh, Michael is on this week is because we are actually reviewing a uh, a beast figure, and so he's like, "Hey, you're actually like in my you know wheelhouse right here." So um, so I actually don't have the figure, but everyone else does. So we we invited uh, Michael to show share his thoughts. Everyone's a bully boy. So yeah, so Generation Toy uh, Red Bull, right? He has no wings. Why, why is this Red Bull? It's Generation Toy Red Bull. Or the better name, Lamble. Lamble would have been a really good Do you get it? <laughs> it's a joke using the name Lambor plus Bull. It is clever. We are the it answers the question. Podcast. What if Sideswipe was also a bull? Our the bull question that dead. no one asked ever. But the a answer man, should is they have the man it answer should have been asked. Is yeah, it, it definitely should have been. Here the he answer is. is yeah, it's pretty cool to have him as a bull. Why not? <laughs> I mean, so. Obviously, some people out there are going to ask the question, "Why is he a bull?" And this, and, and some people probably know, and some people don't know. But the Lamborghini's, you know, logo is a bull. St- straight and simple. Oh, <laughs> surprise! But then, wasn't there also there was there was like this is actually based on some art, right? By yeah, yeah on the TV start. Yeah, well, why was he a bull for that? Now I understand. Right, that's why the bull mode was chosen I get it. for that. No, I, I didn't make that connection. All there, things there go, go together. See, yeah, so it's based I on the, the T Beast art. Yeah, it's like a a, a Dojin, um art book that has a bunch of different characters. Like I, I, I mean, we've gotten the from the same company. We've gotten the Primal. Uh, it was from the T Beast art, and then there's the uh, Ancestrod. Was from the TB star, and then that bumblebee that's been showing up from Transform Element that turns into a tiger is also from that art. There's one from yesterday that got revealed the uh, Eagle Star Screen. I don't know who's making that though. Is that from Strange Custom? I thought it was. No, I think it's from, uh, gosh, was it BB7 or something? Is it? Okay. So it's a. uh, I was looking up, looking it up because I was like, "What the heck is this? Where did it come from?" And apparently, it's like a company that makes knockoff like Gundam model kits. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so I'm, I can't I'm curious, name, like, if I all these companies the making figures like DX9 and 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 whatnot and Generation Toy, like, are they all going to make their own versions of each of these characters, or is it going to like is each one of them just gonna do one? Because like, there's not that many of these animal characters are there overall like a, from this uh, art? a couple dozen yeah, a couple dozen there's two volumes of it yeah oh well there's two volumes is, of it and then there's a z beast which is just zoids transformers which is like the inverse to find it <laughs> so a lot because that's the, the answer to the question okay yeah. so i guess, I guess there is a fair lot. amount of these so there we go yeah it, it's a lot and there's some cool stuff. There's like a, there's a, what is it? Uh, jazz that turns into a horse. Mm-hmm. Uh, wheeljack that turns into, I believe, a wolf. And they're really cool looking. There's some of them. Even an x Isn't x a deer or something? A stag? Yeah, something like that. And it's something such a weird cool. choice to do x But I would love for that to come out. Like I'm happy to see rid characters anywhere I can go. Yeah. He's they don't one get of the enough most love. well-known characters. He's popular, <laughs> obviously. See, and I, I was mentioning that to Christian. I don't know. Someone, uh, someone out there goes by Sideburn on the internet. It's true. It's true. That person uh, needs an x brawn to complete them. <laughs> um, I, I was going to say, I was mentioning to Christian, like, 
you know, I think it would actually work out. Like, if Hasbro could do um, the... Um, like, any Beast characters or whatever, that they could actually do these at the same time uh, that they're doing Beast Wars. And, like, I, I don't know if they could exactly do these because it's not exactly the same, but it seems like that Hasbro's doing a lot of remolding, like, on the same skeleton. So, I, I don't know. I could theoretically see this being a Hasbro thing down the line. Like, who knows? I joke about it in, in the Discord, but... Uh... People keep asking, like, what do you think the third, uh, the third series in the uh, in the trilogy for Siege and you know Siege and Earthrise is going to be? Like, do you think it's going to be Beast Wars? And I'm like, no, it's going to be G1 characters with beast modes. <laughs> I think that's just as likely as anything else. So. Probably the most likely thing is it's going to be G1 characters again. It's like, surprise! It's yet another G1 Megatron. Well, because they, they, they did that like planet map thing, right? With uh, yeah. And uh, so it has very Cybertron vibes. And I'm like, they're just going to do like Optimus from the Beast Planet and Optimus from the Race Planet. and Optimus from every planet. Optimus from the Jungle Planet. I guess Jungle Planet is the Beast Planet. And so that doesn't make any sense. So I just wanted to say, like, real getting us onto the toy eventually. <laughs> um, I know I never talk about packaging because I really don't care about packaging ninety percent of the time. But I've never owned a generation toy figure before, so I don't know if this is like standard for their packaging. But you know, they have the the sleeve, and they have this fancy box. Like it's a nice, like, lined, fancy feeling box with this like nice foam lined. The area for the figures. Nice. That nice is standard for Generation for Toy, and it is yeah. very nice. Yeah, this is Th- cool. Their packaging is top quality. I couldn't remember. I mean, I have the Primal as well, but I had. I mean, I opened that thing like two years ago. I couldn't remember what the packaging was like. It's buried in the closet back there. <laughs> I always wonder with these third party companies because it seems like they're all consistent like within the own company, you know, like the way that KFC or X Transbots or the Generation Toy does it and, and fans toys and, and whatever. So I I always wonder like is it just based on like the factory they're in? Like the factory can make this kind of packaging or or something. I, I don't know, or is it just based on whoever owns it that they're like, I think this would be nice. Not sure. I have no idea, but this is this is the way I want to see a premium toy package because it made me feel like this is nice. I have something cool, and like when I keep this package, I'm not going to feel as guilty as I do about keeping all those like cheap, plasticky looking boxes. It reminds me of the Botcon days. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Have it's hard. You, it's hard to throw boxes. away a foam insert. You throw a foam insert in there, I ain't throwing it away. This, this feels special. So, I mean, I, that's a little silly to, like, go on <laughs> that, but that's how I felt about it. But what's in the box is this. And I think I'm oh, probably yeah. the only one with them in bull mode right now, yeah? Probably, yes. yep. Yeah. yeah, me and Christian both so- showed us off in, in robot mode. Robot, right. So I will start by talking about bull, and you guys can help out. It comes packaged mostly in bull mode, right? It's a little yeah. bit in this transform. It comes in leg mode. It comes in leg mode. Because, I mean, <laughs> already, you know, you could already start comparing him to Tantrum just by being a bull. And then he's in leg mode. So it's kind of people like was, to joke. I was very confused by when I first pulled him out of the package. Mostly because I thought his legs were on backwards. And then I realized, oh, his hooves have ball joints. <laughs> He actually asked me how to fix the legs, and I was like, oh, you just spin the hook around. <laughs> was, I was just like, oh, come on. Of course it has ball joints. This isn't a Hasbro figure with one solid leg piece. No, these are these are nice, mostly articulated legs. Although I think the bull legs are the only thing I'm going to complain about all night. So let's get it started right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, the school Tony in the chat was wondering, like, is is there is this like a specific line that it's called, or is it just like Generation Toy? And Generation Generation Toys just it's just Generation Toys. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing, no special name that we know of. 
And I mean, they've only, this is only their second TV figure. And that first one came out, what, three years ago, two years ago? Something like that. Um, and it's got a repaint inbound, but yeah, it's the only, yeah. only their second one. So I wouldn't say they're really like tackling yeah, like a ton of these or anything like that. It's kind of like they've done a couple. Like yeah. And this is a step up from the Primal 2. I don't know if anyone else owns the Primal. but I want it. Um, I, I really like the Primal, but it's like the... Um, it's got a few pieces that are basically just held on by friction, fall off really easy. Mm. Um, and the articulation's not, I mean, the articulation's great, but it's not as, as good as, as, uh, Lambo here. So I guess we can, we can start talking about the bull. Um, his sculpt is pretty cool. It's definitely not a real bull. As you've probably figured out, you know, this is definitely in the robotic animal G1 style of things where it's, you know, it's obviously a bull. You know, there's a bull face. It's got a bull physique. It's got leg sizes kind of similar to a bull. You can kind of see the muscularness that's implied of it being a bull. Yeah, he's but very, it's definitely he's not a bull. Right? It's a squat rectangle with a bull head. And I almost said arms and legs, which is inaccurate. <laughs> Um, it's actually like reasonably articulated for an animal figure. It's not perfect by any means, but it is reasonable. My favorite points for articulation are the tail, which is nice and segmented and ends in a little grabby claw. Yes, and that... the head is reasonably expressionate. I wish it had a little more side to side. Me too. But yeah, it's, uh, it was. It was pretty adequate for, you know, what you want to do with it. Um, and the only big thing, no, my only big complaint, because I know you mentioned the legs, was its hind legs. And that they, there's not, like, a whole lot of movement in, like, what would be his hips. Um, they just sort of rotate. You can move the hips out, but then you're unclipping them, and it yeah. sort of sacrifices some of the, like, structural integrity of it. But, uh... Yeah, it's uh, it's the only part of his beast mode that I feel like is not very well articulated. That's what I complain about too. It's just you have to tab it in, or you take it off, and it's kind of floppy. And um, yeah, it's a little bit of a limitation. But it has knees, I guess. I'm not good with animals, and like ankle type deals as well. Yeah, it, um, legs are so it's, really tight. A lot of joints are really tight on this guy, but they do move. And then ball jointed hoofies. He's got like five points of articulation in, in the hind legs alone, because his swivels on the waist, and then you got the knee, you got the, like the lower ankle, or whatever the heck that is, the joint that doesn't exist on anything in nature, <laughs> and then the uh, ball joint on the hoof, which is pretty good range it's just it's just that one little area where you have to untab it to have any sideward you know outward movement that so, sort of so what it. about the the front legs do they have more articulate like do they have ball joints or is it is it universals or what so well, it's the like shoulder a, is his shoulder mostly okay so it, it's got good movement okay pretty full and then the the lower leg is like it moves it moves well, but in moving it, you're going to end up with the leg kind of looking a little segmented. If that's something that bugs you like it does me, it's going to bug you. right? You're going to end up with a little space between, unless you put it right in that one pose where it doesn't show up to have the space. So, you know, that, that bugs me, but it's not exactly a terrible thing by any means. Like, there's a lot of poses where you don't really notice it as much. And he's got the hoofy movement and you know since these are in fact his robot mode arms you can get a lot of movement you just kind of have to move things around a little bit because basically his arm is folded up and doubled around here so he's got really thick upper legs at the front now does he have any type of like waist articulation in animal mode like can you get any kind of bend like in the middle or is it just solid i wish 
Can you not? I've seen some people like untab his the feet um, that are tabbing to his back, to. and then get a little bit more movement out of him. Yeah, you probably can. You um, try. Yeah, but it's okay once you but do that. But then you're untabbing him again, um, much like his like hind legs, mm-hmm. uh, and sort of getting rid of some of that structural integrity um, of his beast mode. Yeah, you can partial transform him to get a little more movement. And he has his cannon on his back, which you can clip his second gun into his cannon to give him a double cannon. That's kind of cool. It's got swivel back and forth. Got a nice big cat. Yeah, it's a... That joint's so squeaky. So squeaky, right? You can hear my squeaking. It 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 scares me when I move it. Sometimes, just uh, I'm like, this is so squeaky. Like it's, I don't feel like it's too resistant, but that, that sounds like that's like a fan's toy squeak right there. <laughs> that's some squeak to it. Yeah, it, it is a bit frightening. We have some like, squeak. It's a joint that's I'm afraid it's going to seize up over time. Especially since it's pretty thin plastic, too. Like, maybe there is a little screw there, and maybe if you unscrew it just a little bit, you get a little less resistance out of it. Um, but, yeah. I, I, I know just... overall, like, with the Generation Toy figures, because uh, I've had a lot of their earlier releases, like, they they released a Jazz, that like, just a normal one, and like an IDW one, and uh, I'm trying to think some of their other figures I've had of theirs. Like, I've never had... Like, their plastic has always been pretty good. Like, I've never had an issue with anything breaking on a Generation Toy figure for me. So. Yeah, there's been some breakage reports during Transformation. A couple people have, but I don't think it was, like, really widespread enough to be worrisome. I didn't have any problems transforming him into robot mode or back into bull mode. I haven't gone back to robot. If I if I get bored while you guys are talking about the robot mode, I might break it on air. But you know, I probably won't. No, I, once you do it once uh, and you have a feel for it, it it definitely isn't as scary as it was the first time. There are some definitely some parts that, if you brute forced it like out of frustration, you'd probably just rip the thing in half. Um, and I did feel some of that while transforming it the first time, but once you have it, it's it's relatively simple. I agree. Yeah, yeah it's the chest not too gave bad. me a little bit of trouble the first time, but after that, I'm okay. Yeah, I did. Chest is a bit weird. I didn't realize that the horns went down into a cavity, and so I'm sitting here trying to fold these panels in. Um, and let me pop it open because it's pretty simple. Uh. I'm sitting here trying to fold these panels in and his horns are like down inside of his chest. Um, and they go into these little, little areas down in there where the the tips of the horns do. Um, and that lets the panels sit flush against his chest. And I didn't realize that that's where they were supposed to go. And so I'm sitting here trying to get these, I'm like, the horns are in the way. How am I supposed to hook everything together? Because the whole mid body wouldn't hook together, wouldn't you know clip together, because those horns were in the way. But then once I realized I was supposed to go down into these little cavities, um, it just sort of all made sense. I didn't know that until just now, so now I'm doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, you're fixing it up. So Ripping just out of curiosity, how much did this figure cost? Was it like a hundred bucks, or is it ninety more? Ninety less? to a hundred, depending on where you bought it. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember. I think you can get it cheaper if you um, buy from one of the direct places. But, you know, shipping is difficult right now for a lot of those places. So you're probably in the $90 ballpark. And then is it, um, it like, is it a similar size to, like, the Masterpiece cars? Or is it is he a little I'm bit taller you know. than those? Like, how, He's a little how bit does taller. he compare? Oh, can you so. move that back just a little bit? Okay. Yeah, I was trying to get make sure they're right on the same level. They're not standing on anything, so it's hard to tell, but they're about the same level. So and so maybe these, kind of like a Voyager size or maybe like MMC figure size. Yeah. 
He's just slightly taller. Um, but not too terribly so. I don't have... Do I have Random a... Random beast I had. I don't have a Voyager around or anything like that. I have a Voyager in my left hand right now. Yeah, uh, but yours is in bull mode. <laughs> no, whatever. You can get an idea. So basically, you know, he's this tall with a little more leg. There you go. Fine. <laughs> there we go. Good comparisons. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. So I just want to say before we leave bull mode that I, I just don't have complaints about the details on this figure at all. Like, I like the colors. I think the paint's where it needs to be. The plastic molding where it needs to be. I think it just looks good. I think the original design that they had to work with is, of course, phenomenal. Um, the TV designs are really neat. And I think they did a good job of making this look enough like the bull mode. I have a feeling we'll probably talk about how there's some sacrifices to get the robot to be as good as it is. But, um, yeah, I was actually pretty happy with the bull mode. Like, I've had him... I've had him up on various shelves throughout my house for the last couple of weeks in bull mode, and I still like him this way. A lot of toys, when I display them in alt mode, I'm like, eh, I'm really wasting the toy. But this one, but this one I've been really happy with. Yeah, I, I played with the bull mode a little bit. Um, yeah, obviously, when I first opened him up, he's in bull mode, so I played with him a little bit there, and I transformed him back once. Um, and whether or not he gets a transformation back ever again is, uh, anyone, it, uh, if you, we've discussed on discord too, I'm, I'm a bit of a one transformation and I'm done sort of guy. Like I stick them on a shelf and they become statues. Uh, but you know, this one's pretty fun and I've had it on my desk, like, and while I'm working, sometimes I'd be like, I'm in a meeting, I'll pick up Lambo and I'll start playing with them. Um, so it's definitely just been like right there next to me being interacted with for like the last two weeks since I got it. Um, and it hasn't broken. That's and plus. it hasn't broken. It's a real plus. The last thing about the bull mode and then I'll shut up and let you guys get our robot mode time is that I was trying to show before, but I can't quite get a good angle because I mean, the camera's a little blurry up this close, but his, he has lower teeth in bull mode and they're painted silver i just thought that was a funny little detail he doesn't have any upper teeth i didn't notice that uh, now i want to transform but we're about to talk about robot mode cute a uh, little silver teethy so his mouth doesn't really open very wide which i wanted his mouth to open wider right i really like goofy like i mean this thing is ripe for a minotaur mode right because you can just have him stand up and transform his legs and suddenly you have minotaur mode so i wanted the mouth to open wider so he could look more ridiculous but not quite i like toys <laughs> i like to play with them surprise Okay, robot mode. Transformation was not very painful. Now, I know, I think we dissent a little bit on whether or not the transformation should be considered complicated, right? Because I didn't really consider it that complicated, which is rare for me because I consider everything complicated. It's not horribly complicated. It took me, I don't know, probably 20 minutes to do with no instructions, which I, I, I always use instructions. I was like, yeah, I'll do this with no instructions, no problem. I mean, I did it. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, I... The horns, just like Michael mentioned, and I, as I mentioned, I didn't even do it right. Now they're correct. So uh, w once you get around that part, and once you figure out how the arms move out, it's pretty okay. Oh, and how the legs hold together. That was difficult. I sat there for an embarrassing amount of time trying to figure out how that tail folded up. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like... It's got like four joints in it, and it's not big, but it's somewhere. in the way. What am I doing with this thing? <laughs> I think I just shoved it inside the leg however it would fit. I think that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah, just, basically. Yeah, it's just like, as long as it closes up and tabs together. Which it did. I got it yeah. to do it. But yeah, I wouldn't say that it was... It was 
not particularly complex, um, just maybe particular in how you did things. Um, like, the closest thing I can equate it to that I recently open was like masterpiece uh lyle convoy which i didn't think he was particularly complex either there was just certain parts where it was like until you did it once and understood it it seemed like it was scary and hard to do but then it wasn't this yes, that's right. feels kind of like the x transbots stunning cons to me about that level of complexity i don't have a lyle convoy to, to help compare it to so I'm providing a different option yeah no, i agree with that I agree with that. It feels it feels more like older masterpiece in difficulty mm-hmm. and complexity in time than new masterpiece. Like new masterpiece always makes me sweat and have upset <laughs> and have to text people and take breaks. It this didn't take two just, hours to transform the first time. Yeah, I was just sitting on the floor <laughs> during a D and D session, just transforming it for funsies, and I enjoyed doing it instead of <sighs> feeling very stressed and scared. <laughs> So I think the best thing about this robot mode is that it looks like Sideswipe. Straight up like Sideswipe. Straight up Sideswipe. It's got, you know, little horns here instead of the normal kind of Sideswipe nubs. But I think that's a, you know, that's a good de- detail choice to show what the beast mode actually is. I mean, they could have taken a lot more liberties and you know, made the beast parts more part of the, uh, the robot mode, but they didn't. I mean, you can see a hoof here. They're on the back of his arms and then the horns on the head. Otherwise, it looks like Sideswipe. It's great. Yeah, it pretty much just is Sideswipe. Like, I'm seriously considering getting my, t- having this replace my masterpiece Sideswipe, which I know is bizarre to the rest of you who would be like, why would you put this in a G1 display? Because it's not quite a G1 figure, but I think he looks better than my masterpiece Sideswipe, so I kind of want him to replace it. I think you I mean, better than. I I think that there's enough variance between the original sideswipe and like some of the new stuff that I don't think it wouldn't be crazy. I mean, the the thing that's nice about this figure is is it seems like it could kind of fit into a lot of different displays at least in in robot mode. Like I, I mean, I could see it in an in an MNC display or yeah. you know, fans project or something like that or I could see it with you know, some masterpiece figures, just depending on which ones you're putting it. Like, you don't want to stick it next to the super cartoon accurate ones, but... Probably not. Anna is right, though, that it does feel very old masterpiece the, the second wave masterpiece stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, how I feel about it. So is that is that a good thing or or, or a bad thing? I mean, for me, it, for me, it's an excellent thing. I think for all present, it's a good thing. Maybe yeah. Michael, is it a good thing for you? Yeah, it's, I mean, especially for like, I mean, I like my super complex masterpieces to a degree, um, but when you want to take them down and transform them, you know, forget that. <laughs> Um, and so this one, I mean, yeah, it's just like, and especially since, I mean, I don't, uh, like I don't, I buy third party j- usually just cause it piques my interest, uh, and because it's something cool and unusual, um, or it's something like the giant, uh, Transmetals 2 Megatron that we're never going to get from Hasbro and Takara. Um, but this is this definitely fell in the piques my interest. It's interesting and unusual. But it's not like I don't I don't collect T beasts really, right? It's uh, I bought this because I wanted to to play with it. I wanted to have fun with it. It's like it's it's a third party figure, and I don't like. Eventually, I don't. Is this going to have value or not? I don't even know, right? But I collect some of that stuff back there because I think it'll have. So I love it, but I think it'll also have some value just as it's part of the Transformers line. It's official, but um, yeah, this thing was just like I wanted something that was fun to play with and that looked cool, and it's fun to play with and it looks cool. Um, it's just like characteristically, unquestionably sideswipe as a bull. As a bull. I think that uh, that's one thing that's kind of kept me from buying this figure is, is I'm like, 
where does it fit in in you know overall stuff and then i i feel like it's like well if i ha- if i get this and i have to go back and get the the dx9 you know uh hot rod and then i have to go get the uh the generation toy optimus primal and and you know and then i have to get whatever xxx so that i could make a full shelf of some type of tb so that they all look right together to me um because that's kind of like I, I, unlike Anna, like that's kind of how my brain works. Is it's like I at least need one shelf of stuff to fit together. So oh, I'm normally that way as well, and I, I do have Ancestrod. You know, before I had this one, I don't feel the need to get too many more of these, and we'll talk about that. You know, for my final thoughts a bit later. But this is really fun to have just by itself. Be its own unique, cool different thing and I, i'm good with having one at technically two but i got ancestral because i'm kind of a hot rod guy and i got this just because it's neat that's the whole reason to buy this bigger oddly enough is because it's neat and that's like my whole reason to collect transformers <laughs> is because it's the you know it's neat robot bull guy that turns into sideswipe so um even though he's, you know, you say he's a throwback to the older masterpiece, how is his robot mode articulation? Does he have all of the points of articulation that a modern yes. masterpiece collector Everything would want? Everything that you would want. Legs, rotate, knees, double-jointed knee. Look at him. Mm-hmm. I'll say what I said to Anna the day I got it. He's bendy like Prime. Yeah. MP44. Anything MP44 does, this thing can do. And MP44 is bendy. See, yeah, I mean, that's the thing that visible. really peaks. That's the thing that really peaks my interest because if you can make it to where it's a a solid, not crazy transformation, but it actually has all the articulation that you would want in a figure, like, I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, and I think the reason you can do that is it's not a real bowl. Like, you know, you're not trying to fold a robot into a fluid animal form. You're not trying to fold it into a perfect vehicle shape either. You're trying to fold it into something that can be particularly shaped to work as a robot transformation. You know, it is a robot bowl. It is much easier to fold a robot bowl into a robot man that it is to pull a real bull into a robot man. As shown by all of our attempts at actual bull-like transformers over the years. <laughs> How many bull transformers do we have? If there's a handful? And of least. course, the one that comes to mind first is also a robot bull. You can drum. And then you have your, um, what's his name? Smashdown, the hammer. He's a he's a bull fade. He's a minotaur. He's a minotaur. Uh, do you want to include bison? You got Bone Crusher from Beast Wars. He's a fluid organic bison. Yep, yep, yep. He's a thane. Hey, he's great. So yeah, Catherine in the chat him. was asking about uh, how are the joint tolerances? Like, is there anything that's scary or loose or? Anything stressing or fractures or anything like that? ab crunch this direction is fine. But, yeah, otherwise, that's, that's the ab crunch moving. Nothing else is moving. Yeah. No, the ab crunch is maybe... It's probably the loosest joint on him. Yeah. I wouldn't even um, call it loose. It's just not tight. How about that? Yeah, that's a good way of it, describing it. It feels like it's designed to be what it is. It doesn't feel like it's you know, miss, missing or broken or whatever. Yeah, there I think f- the conversation... Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying there's, like, a few places where, like, joint clearance... Like, you sort of have to move the joint just the right way to get it to uh, to move how you want it, mostly in the shoulders. Um, yeah. And a little bit around the waist. Like, he, his, his thighs bump up against the waist piece... Um, at a certain point, so you only get so much movement out of it, but I mean, like, you get some, like, crazy stuff, like, you can, you can pose them. 
Yeah, yeah Bruce Bowl. No, I didn't feel like there was any scary points that, you know, joints feel like they're too fragile or anything. It feels very robust. Yeah, I didn't feel like it was super scary either. Like, I, I always get super scared transforming my figures, and this one, not so much. Like, I don't feel it would be particularly hard to break this toy. Like, I don't think, like, if you went in, you sat down, and you said, I need to break a toy tonight, I don't think he would struggle very much to break this one. No, he just ripped the gun off his back. Right? <laughs> Which I tried to do earlier. But, but at the same time, it's not something to where, like, if you're actually sitting down and, like, transforming him normally and following the directions on all that, it's not, like, something like, okay, like, compare that to, like, Masterpiece Hound. <laughs> like, would you say that you would be more likely to break that or break this? That. Oh, Hound, for sure. Yeah, right. Oh, so, sure. So, I, I would say, I mean, it... it I know at least from, like, previous generation toy figures, like, I never, again, felt like anything was going to break. Like, if obviously, if you ham-fist it and man. you really yeah. force it, then, then you could. But, I mean, they all they all seem pretty pretty solid and all that. Yep. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm not going to say it's, it's too, mu- it's too uh, much of a general statement to just proclaim this to be the actual case. But I imagine a lot of the breakage on this guy, if there is a lot of breakage, is just impatience um, when you're trying to move something around. Um, Because once you move it into the right spot, you shouldn't break it. Um, You just have to get it to the right spot. And once you know what the right spot is, like after that very first transformation, it's like impossible to miss it after that point close to impossible. I just struggled to get the head close around as I'm doing it while we're on yeah. the show. But There are some weird spots, especially folding his chest together that um, yeah. it still feels a little weird, but you're not going to break it once you know how to do it, I don't think. Um, not likely. Until I re- it's like 10 years old and the plastic starts to get a little weak and I don't know. Maybe then you might have to worry about it might melt at that point you never know but it's not like i was gonna say i want to see anna have like a rob moment on air and and be like oh crap (laughs) and like like how rob did with uh mp44 like i'm just taking it real slow and casually and chatting so i doubt i'm gonna finish transforming this on air because that would make me anxious i'm glad i've never had that I've had plenty of oh crap moments transforming something, but never on air, at least. (laughs) The only thing I broke on air, and it was relatively funny, I thought, but other people didn't laugh as much, was um, when we did uh, the new MP Bumblebee, and I was trying to show the articulation on the Spike figure, and I just ripped him in half. Like, I was trying to show his waist swivel, and it was just... He got jazzed. The good Anyone. thing is, Spike comes with every character that they release, so... Different size spikes, though. So <laughs> now my full-size spike can hold the little spike in two pieces, as if... You like Megatron. Megatron. Yeah. It's your spike collection. ...spirits himself in half, which is fascinating and disgusting. And wonderful. No, that was good. I enjoyed it, because that figure was stupid anyway, so... <laughs> So would you want uh, Generation Toy to make an entire cast? Like, you know, you said that there's like a couple dozen of these or 20 or whatever it is. Would you want to see all 20 of them be made by Generation Toy? Sure. I'm okay with that. I'd, I'd buy all of them, but I'd probably get another fair few. I definitely wouldn't buy all of them just because that's too big of a collection and I'm trying not to go as big as I used to. I'm trying to, to downsize a little bit, but um, I would definitely buy a few of them as well, and I'd like them. I'd be happy to have them, you know, like have them in existence. A few of the designs aren't super great. The hippopotamus one in particular that I'm thinking about, I, that wasn't the one that turns into, I think, Ultra Magnus was like a hippopotamus or something like that. Uh, that one's like, but like, I would love for them to do the jazz. Um, because it's another one that's a lot like, you know, Red Bull here, Lambo here, um, where it it turns into a a beast, but then its robot mode is very indicative of its robot mode of his G1 robot mode. So it it looks like he has the you know 
car mode uh, front hanging over his, you know, as his chest and stuff like that. But it's very clearly like the horse head in the middle with some other stuff that makes up that uh, that same silhouette. Um, because that's the big thing. That's the I think the coolest thing about him is at the once he's transformed, he's the same silhouette as as uh, sideswipe. There's no question about it. Uh, yeah. If you if you took a picture of him and then just made it completely black and just did like a shadow, people would say it's sideswipe. Um, and so like the jazz design in that book is that way. I I think the wheeljack was uh, he's a little more wild, but he's still a little bit that way. Uh, so I would like love to see those from Generation Toys. Yeah, that'd be cool. A, I think it's a really important distinction to make is that they really do very heavily resemble their G1 silhouettes. And I think that's an important thing that, you know, other beast interpretations don't necessarily do. And like Anna mentioned, it's often trying to get robot beasts to go in, or um, organic beasts to go into robot robots. So having you know, robot beasts go into iconic shaped you know, transformers, I think is a really good niche to be in. Maybe that's me. Maybe it won't prove to be successful and they won't make any more, but I think they should. Yeah, I would love it. Except I think the price is wrong. I I talked a little bit when I bought this last week with Lucas and Anna about it, and we we mentioned that it's $90 to $100. When I was transforming it, when I messed around with it, even now talking to you guys about it, it feels like a $60 to $70 figure, not a $90 figure. And maybe that's just me splitting hairs. Maybe that's because I've been out of third party for a while. Maybe it's because I've been out of masterpiece for a while. But it really feels like it should be about sixty dollars. That's me. Yeah, and yeah. you might be right. You know, I've played with it quite a bit, and I have no regret for the price I paid for it. But does it mean it should be that price? Not necessarily. I, it's just that everything that fits the like masterpiece size and you know, the masterpiece level of complexity usually ends up around $100. So it feels completely right to me. Lucas, I'm happier. Sorry, you go. Oh, I was just saying, I'm happier with this than I was with MP Black Arachnia, and I'm a Beast Wars collector. And I paid 120 110 120 for Black Arachnia. <laughs> I have a picture of me giving the finger to Black Arachnia, right? Like, uh, I was frustrated with that toy. I, I so, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from um, on the price, but at the same time, I can think of official figures where I absolutely hated them and I paid more. So it makes it a little easier for me to like not feel bad about what I paid for here. I mean, I, think I don't I know. Feel as extreme about Hound as you do Black Arachnia. Like I, <laughs> I want to flip off Hound honestly. I mean, as good as he looks on my shelf, he looks great. On my shelf right now, he is downstairs. Represented that shelf, making it look nice. But geez, I hate that figure. I hate his existence. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think given the size and the complexity, like it seems like there's some nice paint accents and everything on it. Given the articulation, parts count, all that, it seems like that it's probably around an eighty or ninety dollar figure. So I don't think it's out of line with like what we've gotten for. From those, like, I mean, this to me looks similar, very similar to like an MMC reformatted figure or a Planet X figure or something like that. And those are all around that price. Like, I don't think that honestly we've really seen too many sixty or seventy dollar third party figures. Like, the only ones I can really sure. think of are like the Zeta ones, like those aerial bots and whatnot, or you know some of the KFC or the I'm sorry the X Trans bots. Um, uh, Minasaur parts, but they they kind of like were pricing those so that they could like kind of take over the combiner markets. Like I mean, they were just doing that due to competition and whatnot. So yeah. um, I mean, to me, it, it seems like that compared to other similar figures, like I think the value is probably there. I think it's probably a different conversation to have. Like I know Christian, you know, we kind of talked about the the fact that. You know, and some people complain about the price of, of you know, Siege and Earthrise now. But you know, the the quality that that they have at twenty or thirty dollars, 
um, you know, like you can kind of see, you're like, well, is this figure three times, you know, worth three times as much as a Hasbro Voyager or whatever? And, you know, like, but it's a completely to, to different me, I say figure. No. And you asked me last week if I was glad that I bought it. And I, I changed that question around a little bit because I, I do have a little bit of price regret. But I am glad that I have it because it's a very good figure and I like it a lot. I do think I overpaid a little bit. But you did mention the uh, the War for Cybertron figures. And I, I want to talk about that for a moment. I really feel that if this got shrunk down by about 30% and they took out some of the complexity, like they blocked the legs and they... You know, made the arms, you know, like Hasbro would make them. This would be the best deluxe I've seen in years. So when we were talking earlier about maybe next year having G1 figures with beast modes, if that's what that is, if that's if this is what that becomes, I'm in. I'm so in. It'll be my favorite line they've ever done. Right. I see what you're saying. I mean, I think, again, like, third-party figures, they, they're doing a much smaller run of, of some of the figures, and they, you know, a lot of times they don't take the shortcuts that, you know, Hasbro does, where you might have some gaps here or there, and, you know, like, they could have thrown an extra panel or parts or whatever. I mean, this definitely does it. So I think that it's, like, one of those things where it's, like, yeah, you might have some regrets when you initially get it, or, or, you know, when you, like, put your credit card down or whatever. But then, like, you know, whatever. Six months from now, like, when you see it on your shelf, like, you're probably... I mean, it's all going to blend together and, and whatever, so... Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's the point at which I still want to like it. And I think I will, because, I mean, I've already had this thing. I was the first one to get it out of all of us, and... Um, because I was super excited for this figure. Like, I've, I've actually gotten pretty good at being able to judge in pictures online if I'm going to like a figure a lot or not. And I saw this one. I was like, wow, this is going to be my favorite figure of 2020. And it is, so far, my favorite figure of 2020 by miles. Um, and, yeah, I'm just going to be happy with it in the future, right? Like, I'm not going to worry about the fact that it, I, I think it was 100 for me. I think I paid a little more to get it sooner. And um, I'm not going to worry about it because it's just, it's going to be on my shelf for a long time. I'm not going to get rid of this one. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of MP Sideswipe, but I've always hated him. Poor guy. It's not that great of a figure. It's not that great of a figure? No, it, it's not. I mean, the. <laughs> I love the. I, I, I love the. I mean, if you're going to get any of them, get the G2 Sideswipe. Yeah, that's yeah, the one I got. It's a better, it's a better yeah, one. That's the cool one. Well, it's got the best face. It's the worst face I've ever seen on a Transformer. Oh, wow. I want, so I, that wow, is there are some trash faces, and, my friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the, like that's the, the, the trashiest one of all. But I, I, want, like I want I want him in G2 trash. colors. That'd be cool. Lambo and G2? Oh, man, that's too many items to own. Yeah. I, I feel like Ooh. that they will probably With some do lime it. green Con accents. Considering mm -hmm. that they, they're repainting that Optimus Primal as like a white version, right? For some yeah. reason. Yeah, but it years like later. I want right. them to do that Optimus in red because then it'll look like one G1 Optimus, but two, and more importantly, Primal Prime. Oh, uh, Primal Prime. Primal yeah, Prime but, is well, amazing. Yeah. I'm wondering if they didn't do it just because, like, Primal Prime just came out, right? Or the... Um, not Primal Prime, but the but whatever the... There's a red version of Optimus Prime, right? Oh, uh, you mean Burning the Burning Convoy? Burning, burning Convoy, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that one did just come out. Which I would yes. take a... I, I take a Burning version of that one, too. But I'm weird because I buy Beast Wars stuff. Um, yeah, you <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think that would have any effect, but maybe. I wouldn't well, think so either, but maybe. I, I mean, I'm just thinking, like, that the company might be thinking that. Like, they're like, oh, someone just got a red Optimus Primal. They may not want this. I, you know. I, yeah, who knows? Yeah, I yeah, know. maybe. Who knows? The white one does look cool. It looks like Nova. If it was more Magnus-y, I might have gotten it. Yeah, yeah I'm not yeah. super attached to Nova, so I'll probably pass. But yeah, like I said, if they do it in red for Primal Primes last year, it looks like G1 Prime, then uh, I'm in. I almost wondered if it, with the white one, if they were trying to also like 
I don't know, like harken back to some of like the really old like 1980s Zoids that just had like they were white with chrome pieces. Yeah, there's an idea. Um, that's that a bit makes of, more sense. Yeah, well, and it, it might be a little bit of both, you know. I mean, fill that gap. Like the the some people are gonna say it's Ultra Magnus. You, some people could say it's Nova Prime. I'm a weirdo that's gonna say it's a Zoids thing, but. Uh, it could be all of them in, in one, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, the more fans you hit like, with a single something. release, though, yeah. Yep, Let their imagination go wild. Yeah, I, th- I think you're probably right. It's so I'm sold this one. I do not care how you display it. it. Please make it red. I would definitely buy it red. I'm on the fence on the white one. Make it red. Red, red would be no questions. It would just be yeah. done. Where did my money go? Oh, I have a red, <laughs> red gorilla. That's great. That's fine. Just someone let me find a reasonably priced one again. Now that I know that I really like these toys, so, I just so want the, the normal black one. Sideswipe overall, though, would you recommend them? I guess Christian, you said he's a little expensive for your taste, but like, would you still buy him again? I don't know if I would buy him again. But I'm glad that I have him. And if you think it's neat, you should get it. Is that is that fair enough? I think that's fair enough. Sure. It's okay. fair. I that's, that's indecisive. I like it. I'm a very indecisive person. Works for me. You know my opinion, cool. Max? I'm yeah, so what, what do you think, Anna? I love this thing. This is, like, my favorite toy I bought in forever. Um, it's actually like an Anna Transformer. Like, I've enjoyed a lot of the retail stuff that we talk about on the show, but as you all know, if you watch the show and you listen to me, I don't really get that into it, right? Like, the retail stuff for me is like, put it on the shelf, forget it, or have it down to fiddle with, but not really get excited about posing it. This is a toy I can get excited about posing. Like, he looks fantastic in many, many poses, and he strikes really good poses. So many. Uh, I posted so like many. six or seven the day I got it. Just like, guys, look. <laughs> look at it. Look. <laughs> and they were really poses, too. Like, he really captures them well. The only place, like, you can kind of get shots down around his neck that may look kind of messy. Yeah, that look a little there. weird. Yeah, but that's really the only spot. Otherwise, he captures all those, like, humanoid form poses really well. So, yeah, I've super enjoyed this figure, and I'm really glad that I got it. It makes me want to go back and get their primal, and it makes me want them to do another one, and I'll get that as well, because I have some confidence in them now. I really hope they do jazz next. That'd be great. I'd be all for it. I'd buy that for sure. I don't think of repaints of this. Like, if they did Tiger Track or Deep Cover, Clamp Down, Clamp Down, I might get. But, like, the others, mm, yeah. I don't think I would get straight repaints of this. Oh man, see, I was about to. It was about to. It was about to come to me, and I was about to say, "I'll buy this in G2. I'll buy this as Tiger Track." Oh no! I I love it. I think I I not regretted a second of purchasing it. Um, Like it's, I think it's the funnest toy I bought in a long time. Um. And so yeah, I'm I'm down for repaints of it if they want to repaint it. I'm down for whatever they do next, and if it comes out just as well or better, you know, that would be fantastic. That's why I re- I I mean I really hope they do that jazz because the jazz it fits the same like design uh, paradigm where they're going for the the beast mode with the g1 looking body and i think after this one they can pull it off and it'd be amazing do we say is the jazz is he a horse is that what you said earlier yeah horse for whatever reason it doesn't have anything to do with porsche as far as i'm aware of (laughs) you know michael I'm, i'm almost slightly jealous of you because the only toys that you get are like boy, beast wars characters and beasts and all that right and like all the beasts were the majority of the beast wars are all really good like i mean as much as i know you complained earlier about black arachnia it's probably better than a lot of Ow. you know other transformers figures that comes out so it's like if that's like your worst figure that you know that you've bought in the last couple of years 
You're not Black doing Rechnia too bad. Black Rechnia is better than Hound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Black Rechnia, because uh, as much as I hate it, it looks fantastic in, in robot mode. Yeah, Black uh, Rechnia is fine. So, yeah, it's... Uh, and it, unfortunately, it means that my, my opinion pool is very small. Um, I don't have a lot of... Like, the first Siege figures I experienced were the the cell shaded ones so like up until that point i had no idea that what the state of the current like lines were like and I, i'm back in that same boat again with Earthrise. i haven't bought anything yet but um yeah so you know take me saying it's the best figure that i've played with in a long time as a grain of salt but it is the best figure i've played with in a long time i buy a lot of masterpiece stuff <laughs> Right, right. But I saying that again, that. It's, if if you're saying it's you know better than or or that you like it better than some masterpiece figures, like you know those are all over a hundred bucks. So you know there you go. I definitely like it better than the masterpiece figures I've gotten this year <laughs> as well. I agree with you. Um. So if you had a uh, what's the other masterpiece figure that you said came out uh, this year, Michael, that you bought? Uh, the was it Lyle Convoy? Lyle Convoy, yeah. And so, if you could only buy one between this one and that one, which one would you get? Good question. <laughs> this hurts. I mean, unfortunately, I'm a Beast Wars collector and an official Transformers collector, so I would get Lyle Convoy. <laughs> But I would really miss having this figure. Yeah. I would, like, if someone came and, like, was like, I'm going to take one of your babies away, and you got to choose which one. Fortunately, I play a little bit of biased favoritism to one, but I'd be really sad that the other one got taken away. <laughs> well, cool. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys showing this off. It was. It was fun to, to see this. It was, it was a lot yeah, it's good to talk about. So, um, there's not going to be an Ouch My Wallet ne- uh, tomorrow because it's every other week. So, uh, But there will be Cut the Tape uh, on Friday. Uh, we did TFYLP last night, so if you want to uh, check that out, we talked about movie masterpieces last night. Uh, and then also uh, TF Talk News uh, dropped this week. So there's the new Earthrise uh, Seekers that are coming out, uh, Skywarp and Thundercracker. And so uh, they give you some tips on how to find it in your area. So uh, there's a lot of good information. So if you want to uh, check that out as well. So, the way you find it in your area is you go to the internet and you <laughs> order it online. There's 12 steps <laughs> according to Mr. Starscream if you if you listen to it. Uh, so uh, you have to have the DCPI and and all that. Uh, or, yeah, you or can a just link order it. it online. That's a great idea. You can't order it online yet. So just patience. Patience is the coolest advice you could give anyone in this fandom because they'll just laugh at you. You say that, and then there's $200 Skywarps from people that were too patient to... So. Oh, I know. That, that's my joke. It's like well, patience snooze, but also be patient. There's that right. large area in the middle where everyone should operate. Yeah, but that's not Transformers fans. That is not oh, well, That's not any fandom. We are <laughs> Exactly. I'm, I'm a part of a lot of those things. And... No. <laughs> that's, that, is, that is absolutely true. So, uh, anyway, so uh, thank you to everyone in the chat that uh, participated. It sounds like uh, we sold this to, to Catherine. Um, and then uh, Paul uh, as well. Right. Randall showed up late. Um, Tony uh, as well. Uh, it was in the chat, Eric, earlier. Shout out to um, Rodimus Supreme in the Discord. Oh, I yeah. Got you, buddy. Rodimus, yeah. Even though you disagree with me on Masterpieces, I still got you. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah, anyone we sold this to, I'm proud. You'll enjoy it. This is a 
if you weren't going to get it before, you know, this is a solid toy to put in your collection. Unless you don't like side swipes or red things or animals or fun. Yeah. If you don't like those things, don't buy it. Stop. Oh, yeah. If your so. favorite Transformer in the last few years was Masterpiece Bumblebee. <laughs> don't buy this figure. Don't buy this figure. And also feel free not to come back. Just wow, just man! Wow, wow. we we just welcome. Kidding. You know, I mean, I uh, you know, we try not to disparage those that, you know, maybe if they're masterpiece movie collectors, maybe, but <laughs> just kidding. Just anyway. don't collect Energon. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Unicron trilogy, rise up! I was uh, earlier. No, you're allowed to ride like Armada and Cybertron. It's just not Energon. Not Energon. I went like a week ago <laughs> through and tried to figure out what. Unless shells you like Armor Hide, you're allowed to like Armor Hide. I tried to figure out what shelves in my room gave me the most regret. Iron Hide. It's Iron Hide. The Energon. The Energon shelf gives me the most regret. Armor Hide is a very actually, small shelf. And then Armor Hide to <laughs> pick up semi cab. Is it any, anything else before we go? Nope. Nope. Randall says bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. That's TN. You guys aren't allowed to use it anywhere else. Lambles mine. Oh, oh so I forgot sorry. to mention uh, go the, the Discord, too. So if you want to talk about this and other stuff and all that, um, join our Discord chat. Oh, yeah, Michael is super active there, so you can talk to him more. Bye. Bye. Bye.